Good morning. Happy New Year. I'll be the last person to say that to you this year, I think. But thanks for coming along to the February Authority meeting. Uh, apologies for absence, please, Judy. Dominic Elston and Marcus Kravitz, and we are missing Theo um, and Jeremy Nasty at the middle. Okay, they, they might have been stuck on the recycling lorry or something. Um, declarations of interest. Robin. Don't think so. No. Stephen. Nick. Sorry, no. He didn't know how to get round me. It went to Stephen, and then all of a sudden it was me. So they were all paying a lot of attention. <laughs> Christine, any declarations of interest or lobbying? No, not that I'm aware of. Welcome back. Francis? No. No. Andy? No. I'm not easy. Chairperson's announcement. Um, it's my very sad task to tell you that Suzette Hibbert, who was a member here, a very valued member here, um, recently passed away. Her funeral is tomorrow. So I'm just going to ask you all to have a minute's silence to remember Suzette and all that she did for the area. Thank you, members. Um, Suzette always asked me what was happening here. So she, even though she was no longer a member, she took great interest in what we were up to. And she very much enjoyed her time on the authority. So um, I'm sure that many of you will miss her and hold her in your hearts and your prayers. Minutes of the last meeting, which was on the 5th of December, which seems such a long time ago, hasn't it? So, could I have somebody to pose their correct record, please? Thank you, Jeremy. And a second of Bill, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. As usual, we'll um, carry on as we do going to each page. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, I just need to ask you if you had any lobbying or declarations of interest. No, Jeremy. Thanks. So, moving on to item six, we're very pleased to be joined by Justine from Grant Thornton, and uh, I'm sure you've all enjoyed looking at the nice pictures in the report we've got. I'm going to hand over to you now, Beth. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I introduce uh, Justine Fort from Grant Thornton, our external auditors, who is going to present this report on the annual an interim annual letter and value for money to you as members. Hello, Justine. Can you hear us okay? Yes, thank you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, you, you, are, you, are, oh. being, you are being recorded. You, you've got a room full of members here at some National Park. Okay, lovely. Okay, so shall I share my screen and uh, take you through the report? Okay, let me do that. Excuse me. Right. Okay, so um, I joined when I heard you were talking about the pictures, so that was one of the very pleasant sides of um, this report, was actually getting to know Exmoor more, and it is absolutely amazingly uh, beautiful, so I will actually come and visit you at some point. Um, but in terms of this report, uh, if I can take you to page three, and um, you can see in the executive summary 
our overall auditor judgments on the three areas. Now, the three areas that make up the value for money arrangements are financial sustainability, which is talking about your short and medium term financial health, governance and improving economy efficiency and effectiveness. Now, we um, grade, a, um, grade a green, uh, amber or red, depending on the number of improvement recommendations and or significant recommendations. So in terms of your financial stability, your arrangements um, are good. Um, you have good arrangements in terms of your financial controls and also your financial planning. What this doesn't make a judgment on, and I think we mention it in the next page, um, is the increasingly challenging financial environment that you're facing. Um, so although your arrangements are green in, in the fact that you're managing your situation well, um, I would urge members to um, have a look at the medium-term financial plan, understand um, where savings are required, um, and really sort of push for um, a real understanding of the trajectory in terms of if there are any gaps appearing in the medium term. So um, in terms of governance, we, um, we didn't identify any significant weaknesses. There were two improvement recommendations, and those are around your arrangements for um, risk management, and we can discuss those in more detail as I take you through the report. In terms of improving economy efficiency and effectiveness, again, a green rating in terms of no significant weaknesses and no improvement recommendations. Okay, so if I take you on to page four, which is the executive summary, I talked about financial sustainability um, and the challenges that you face. Uh, governance, we can talk about the risk management and um, improving economy efficiency and effectiveness. Again, there were no um, issues to um, discuss. So if we go to page um, 12, which is the improvement recommendation one, and that's around the authorities' arrangements for performance management and risk management. And actually, if I take you back to um, the chart um, on page 10, now this is, this is how you monitor and assess your risk. And if I actually make this bigger, um, then it would be more helpful. So if you look at your risk profile, you can see that um, your main strategic risks, there are no green, um, there are no red, there's one orange, and they're mostly grouped around the yellow. Um, and this is, this, is, um, this is interesting, the fact that um, what we're saying is that your risk management arrangements could be further improved. So by having a look at the scoring, um, having a look at the scoring, and also having a look at the... Um, how they're actually do it improving determining authorities' risk appetite. Yeah, having a look at the scoring and then working out what controls you do have in place so that not only do you have a gross score, but you may or you may have a target score that you're aiming for. So you may want to manage those risks further down, further down into the green boxes. Um, or they may be such that um, the risk profile is increasing um, and they may move further up into um, orange and certainly perhaps in the um, medium term, the financial risks around um, funding, around savings plans, around your medium term financial plan, um, they may be moving in a different direction and actually further towards the, the higher risk. So when we're saying about um, improve, sorry, I'm just making this smaller. So when we're saying about improving risk management, it's about being a bit more understanding about how those risks are managed and not just scoring them um, at yellow. So. Um, it's understanding the council, the authorities' um, risk appetite. So, are you happy with the 
with those risks being at that level? Do you need to implement more controls uh, to bring those risks down to green? Or can you um, save resources and actually think about the risk or the opportunity and perhaps tolerate the risk at a higher, at a higher risk? Um, and perhaps that risk move, moves up into, um, up into orange. So th this is about determining the authority's risk appetite for its strategic risks. But if we go back, in order to determine the risk appetite for your strategic risks, it's about actually identifying what your strategic risks are. So in the first recommendation, we've actually suggested that you integrate your performance management system, which measures the achievement of your strategic objectives in your plan. Um, and the measurement of those strategic objectives and the outcomes of those measurements will actually inform your risk profile. So if performance management means that um, a strategic risk is being well managed, if performance is green, um, then you'll probably have a lower risk. Um, if things are more difficult in terms of finance, perhaps, or an operational issue, then you might have a higher risk. Um, and it is, it is performance management which will inform your risk scoring. So those are the two recommendations we're talking about. We're talking about the integration of performance management, risk management, and actually discussing that at a higher level um, at the leadership team, and then having quarterly reporting to the authority. So the authority is aware of how performance and, and um, risk is integrated and those authorities those um, organizations that are all more risk mature actually take this approach in terms of in integrating the two so I'm happy to take any questions on risk management but let's just talk through the um, the three E's and where we are in terms of um, so that's on page 14 talking about the um, your performance management, how you identify um, areas for improvement. Um, so you do have your performance indicators, um, which are good. And then you have some useful partnership working um, with stakeholders. And then in terms of... Um, Can I um, just interrupt you there? We, did, we do have a question from one of our members on, in terms of risk management side of things. Can I just uh, pass over? Yes, please. Sorry, I can't see the room to, uh, to read it. Thank you so much. Andrew, Andrew Bray is asking a question, Justine. You can't see us. Yes. Hi. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much report. Um, I've got experience in risk management. I used to be at Deloitte Consulting and um, I do risk management. Okay. Um, I, I like the idea of saying use the four T's, and that makes sense. I think I may have even mentioned that to Ben when they presented the report. Uh, but when I look at the report presented, there was some risk management taking place. There was, there was inherent risk. And then was it Ben looked at it, and then reapplied some thinking to those risks and said how they would treat them. Yes, they didn't use the four T's, but then the risks were, were reported as the current risk. So there's been some risk management taking place. I just want to be clear of what else, as well as use the four T's, what else do they need to physically do to 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 meet what you're saying? Yeah. So so that's great that they've got the. Um they're using, they're actually identifying controls, so it's not just about risk scoring and all the risk being um, around this, or the orange-yellow mark. Um, it's about actually looking at how those risks can be uh, managed. Um, so it's about what, what would your target risk score be? So you could say the, the actual risk at the moment is yellow, and that's after risk management um, arrangements have been applied. Uh, so you, this is, you know, this is after controls have been applied. But then what's the risk appetite for each of those risks? Where does the authority want to be on each of those risks? Okay. And that's, that, that's the next step. Yeah. Not naturally just everyone in the green box, if possible. Literally no, no, because that. that's... Yeah, that's that's not that's not realistic, is it? That's not real life. No. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you both. We've also got another question. Um, me. Or another two questions, actually. 
Th thank you, Chair. Justine, thanks ever so much indeed for this comprehensive report. It was just a, a quick <laughs> one from me um, in terms of performance management you, you raised. So does each colleague in the authority, uh, do they have a performance management plan that aligns to the strategic aims uh, of, of the authority that you're, that you're looking at here? So what, I, what I'm after really is, is some of the things you've identified are, are excellent. So do each colleague have a responsibility within their performance plans or whatever to achieve these goals to, to, to align to the strategic aims of the authority? Thank you. We didn't look at an individual level um, because uh, that would take too long, but that would be the ideal framework, obviously, to have that golden thread from uh, business plan, uh, business objectives, and that golden thread to, you know, down to actual people delivering those business objectives. So, yes, it should be part of the performance management and annual appraisals. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and we've now got Mandy. Justine, just bear with okay. me. Okay. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I was quite surprised, actually, we didn't have more into the sort of orange and maybe touching the red, certainly around the resilience and finance, given the papers we've had recently around... Um, reductions that need to be made um, and I understand I'm totally familiar with the 5 by 5 uh, matrix. Um, I'm not quite sure in the paper you've given that the 5 by 5 that we've got a 4.2, 3.3, 1.4 etc. So are you using points as if, if I look at the specific <coughs> numbers or is in the matrix is that relating to a specific risk? I couldn't tally the 3.3, 4.5 with the other dialogue in, in the report. I couldn't quite make sense of that. Thank you, my no, this is, this is a direct... Um, this is your graph, so it's your risks from your risk register, so the, the, the points aren't, aren't relating to my report. If I, if I can come in there, Chair. Um, so the, this is from November risk register that came to full authority. Um, they're actually the references of those risks. They're not actually a scoring. They are... Risk 2.2 is our risk of national park grants. So the, the numbers in them don't actually relate to the scoring. The, the position in the chart is the scoring. Um, and we've now got Jeremy Yabsley, Justine. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is more of a, 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 a remark from a, from a member um, to our own team, really, uh, using this risk, this risk chart. We, we were doing this ten years ago with North Devon Homes, <coughs> and the golden thread that you mentioned is so important, isn't it? What I would like to see as a member going forward, that there's a golden thread from each, each risk, which is not in green, that goes to senior management team, there's a discussion, and then there's something back for us to keep an eye on, and I'm thinking particularly, Chairman, with our less meetings, <coughs> more less frequent meetings, and with our big project, I think that's particularly important for me, anyway, going forward, just as I can connect to those risks. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, very happy with that. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Chief Executive. One blank look, one thing, yes, yeah. noted. Thank you. Any more hands? No, thank you. Okay, Justine, if you want to carry on, thank you. Thank you. So, um, so where are we? We we just quickly touched, didn't we, on the um, the third category for the value for money arrangements, and that's on page fourteen. And those are the three three E's. Um, in terms of us following up on our work, um, obviously we carry out this annual assessment, and so on page um, sixteen, what we've got is prior recommendations, uh, a number of those, and um, and this is the progress to date in terms of those recommendations. So, so the, what we'd ask is that the authority continues to uh, follow up on these um, where it says, you know, the 24-25 budget will include this. Uh, these proposals are being prepared. Um, and obviously, we'll pick it up next year as well. Um, so in terms of the opinion on the financial statements, as I said, Barry Morris, who's the engagement lead, sends his apologies. Um, he couldn't, couldn't be with us. And actually, the audit manager, Liam Royal, 
um, is on six weeks um, jury service. Um, but in terms of an update, they are um, hoping to sign off the 22-23 um, financial statements in March. Um, so the final um, report for this, this is actually the interim report because we haven't got the final um, opinion to actually put in here. So the final report will be brought to the, um, the early April authority meeting if there is one so it will be it will be the next authority meeting i know you're you're going by by uh monthly now aren't you so we might just miss miss the march one if there is a march one so if anyone's got any more questions um i'm happy to take those thank you justine any further questions andrew um look on page 14 um <coughs> Actually, your views on this. There's a comment that there are 60 milestones setting out key actions. In your experience, does that sound a lot? Is it too many? Should they be prioritised? Just your thoughts on that, the fact there are 60 milestones in the, um, in the plan. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one. Without the detail, I wouldn't know. Normally, a milestone is part of a project. So, you, you know, it's, it's actually breaking a project down into smaller chunks you know, smaller deliverable chunks and reporting chunks. So it does sound a lot, but I would expect a higher level, you know, um, of reporting. Um, and 60 mi milestones will probably be a, there'll be sub, um, you know, progress uh, markers, as it were. Okay. I'm sure that I'm sure there's a good framework, and I and I think we would have picked picked it up. It's really about. Um, the objectives, the risks, the performance, and integrating those. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Any further questions for Justine? Okay, thank you. So we've been asked to receive this report, so are we all happy to do that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justine. Thank you, and I just can I just thank officers for all their support during the audit. Uh, they've been really, really helpful. So thank you, Ben and team. Thank you. All right. Forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Item seven is personnel update. Um, we've got two people that have left us: Kate and Rose, and we wish Rose lots of many happy years in her retirement. I'm sure. Item eight is any other business of urgency. I don't have any. And then item nine is confidential business. I need a proposal and second, please. Stephen. I'm happy to propose uh, that we move into confidential section in the terms described in the agenda. Thank you. You have to second. Thank you. Robin, just second. All those in favour? That's unanimous, Judy. Thank you.